on this little pumpkin guy or this cat, we'll be making a basic doll body with just two pieces and a head, whatever kind of head. These happen to be little friends from over the garden wall. I've got one of the little pumpkin people and I've got Enoch, the cat that lives inside the giant pumpkin monster thing. <laughs> This is the one we're making in this video. The basic body is just two tubes stitched together at the legs, across the front and the back for the body, and then the arms. You can put any kind of head on this. I have a video on how to make pumpkins up here with the ribbing. And I show you how to make the little cat head in this video. You can do anything. You can make people. You can make monsters. <laughs> Let's get started on this fun video. I am using Pound of Love Black to make the two tubes for the body. They are 60 rounds long. That gets you from the foot all the way to the tip of the arm. So it's a tube that's like that for one side and for the other side. Standard back and forth cast on, and then we will knit 60 rounds. And I'll meet you back here when we're casting off. Standard long tail cast off. Thread the yarn onto your needle. Run this around till you get back to the first needle. And then start picking up. And now we've got I've changed machines. This is my Addy 22 needle professional, and I am going to make a cat head out of black. Just run a regular tube. It's going to be 20 long. Then I'm going to add a drawstring in the middle, and then I'll do 25 more. The 20 long piece becomes the inside of the head. The 25 on the outside gives us room to make the cat ears. And because it's lined that way, you don't have any of the show through from the stuffing. Standard back and forth cast on just like we did for the body tubes. Nice and easy, nice and loose. To do the drawstring, I'm going to take a really long piece of yarn, drop it in, and feed it with the main yarn. Hold on to the two of them together. When you get back to the first one, open up the door, cut the yarn off, and just let it ride. We're going to do another 25 rounds, 45 rounds total, and then I will take it off just with a regular long tail, pick it up with the needle, cast off. I'm going to run all the way around and pick up I want to get this cat head made and a couple of things that need to be done. You need to drawstring in the ends, but before you completely drawstring everything in, you need to make sure to turn. I know this is going to be very difficult to see because I did do it with black, but I'm going to try because I really wanted to do this as a black cat. So right here, 
I'm pushing my finger so that I can see where to put those drawstrings. And I'm going to pinch it, pinch the drawstrings right against that opening that I made and pull them to the outside. Now I can close both ends. Just like closing a hat, close both ends. Run your needle around. This is where my yarn's coming out. I'm going to run the needle around through those loops from either the cast on or the cast off. We're going to tuck this inside, fill it with fiber fill, just regular crafters polyfill. So this end is the inside. It's my shorter one. This is the outside. It's the longer one. And right here in the middle, where the drawstring is, this is actually the top of the head. That's where we're going to shape the ears. All right, I'm gonna leave that. We're going to tuck this inside. This is the neck down here where the two ends come together. Actually, I'm going to pull this tail through to the outside. And tie those two ends together. Remember, it doesn't matter. These ends are going to be used for sewing the neck or sewing at the neck and putting it on the body. I'm going to put some of the stuffing in and then I will figure out where his eyes are going before I close up the top because I want to put these little safety eyes on. Now safe and nose. So safety eyes are safe if you have kids that are over, you know, three or four years old. Um, younger than that, you're going to want to do embroidery. Take some of the stuffing, put it in. Just trying to decide, you know, where that's going. I want to get my drawstring to the end. I'm not going to drawstring in very much here, but I wanted the drawstring so that I would have a way to know exactly where my, my mark is. But look at that. We're already getting cat-like look. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go eyeball, eyeball. Are we going to have, um, are his eyes pretty, pretty far apart? I need to take a look. Let me show you a picture of Enoch as a cat. All right, so there's Enoch the cat dancing with some of his little pumpkin friends and I think that the eyes need to be a little bit closer. We need to leave room for his room for his ears at the top. And I'm going to put his nose pretty high up. Just bring that through. that feel like they're about about even that one's a little bit high I think maybe one stitch high nice thing about playing with it at this point you can move them around until you get them right you don't have to worry about it being not right forever let's see I think this is the size one for the nose Snap it on and stab it down tight. I want it 
here. There we go. These are easier, quicker than putting, doing the embroidery. Just make sure you're using the right size back and that you snap it all the way down. Push until it's all the way down. You can get a tool to make that easier. And they're always going to end up with a curious or interesting expression. I'm going to draw that in just a little bit. Keep your hand inside when you're drawing it in. We're taking the slack out of the yarn, but we're not actually, not actually making it um, drawn in to make a round ball. All right, we're going to use these threads and I'm going to be stitching across and then I will pull two stitches down to give you a head like that. This could be Gigi from Kiki's delivery service also. I'm just going to go back and forth and pick up stitches all the way across back and forth so it's hard to see I know but in the columns between the stitches there's a bar we're just gonna pick up that bar back and forth this is going to give us a basically flat top to him to shape his ears Stitch the top closed however you want. Just make it so when, when it is closed, it's not pulling in. Okay, I'm gonna pull that just a bit, just to make sure that I'm getting it closed nicely. Look at that. We have a cute little cat head. That is going to be just fine on this little body size. So I'm going to pinch to find where the inside of that ear is. I'm going to come to the outside right where my thumb poking. I'm going to make a little stitch right here just so that my yarn doesn't pull the tip of the ear down. We're just going to do like a little running stitch area here back and forth. And I am picking up on the inside. I'm not, my, my yarn is not coming to the outside here, but it is joining it to the ball on the inside. You know, because we've got two layers here. I'm joining it to the second layer inside. We're not coming through. Let's see if I can show you. I'm not coming through here on the ear. I'm stitching the front of the ear to the ball. And I think that's going to be good. And then I'm going to take this and go all the way down and out the bottom near those other threads, those other pieces of yarn. All right, 
Do the same thing on the other ear. Well, now I've got all kinds of yarn I can use to attach it. Isn't that just the cutest way to make a little cat head? Now these bodies are exactly done, done exactly the same way as my bunny and my bear. The bear was made with two longer tubes, but the arms are separate on the bears and the bunnies. So that gives you another way that you could build your critter. So there we go. This is linked up here in the playlist of little knit toys. The tubes get closed. You want to make sure that you've got the, you don't want them twisted. Make sure you've stretched. But the tubes get closed flat and you use the yarn that's coming out of the bottom. So I'm going to go like this and make sure that there's no slack in that yarn. I'll show you with one and then I will close all of the other ends. Even though I'm using black yarn, you can do anything with any color of yarn. So don't be, don't be scared of the dark colors. You just need more light. I've got my needle threaded with the yarn coming out. If you look here, this yarn is coming out from these inside of these loops. Here, tip, tip it like this so maybe you can see it better. Maybe. Go like this because I can pull this out from the other end. I'm just slipping the card in so that you can see better what I'm doing. The yarn is coming out. It's coming from this backside here. So I'm going to come forward and pick up a loop. And these loops are the loops that are going over the top of the yarn I'm working with. So these loops, I'm just going to go back and front, pick up a loop, come forward, pick up the, pick up a loop, come forward. See, I can just, I'm looking here. I'm going, okay, where's my loop? My next loop is here. And then go back and pick up a loop. The reason for closing them flat just makes it easier when I am rolling the ends to make the legs. So there's the loop. And to make the arms. I'm not picking up the working, the, the yarn that I'm working with. I'm picking up the loops that the yarn that I'm working with is going through. So picking up that loop. Picking up that loop. Back and forth. Front and back. And the nice thing is, if you miss one, it's no big deal because you've already got a yarn going through it. This is just joining the front and the back together or joining the ends of the tube. Closing one end in first makes it easier. So now I can go and make sure that my tube is not twisted. Yes. I'm going to close up the ends on the, the other three ends, and then we will start doing the mattress stitching going up the leg, then go over, do the mattress stitching going up the leg. Then we will stitch the front and stitch the back, stuff the body, and then do the arms. I'm gonna get these ends done.
let's get down to the fun stuff. We're building a basic body form. If you don't have the head here, you've got your legs, your tummy, and your arms. And it could go either direction. So if you wanted to make one of those two-faced dolls, you could do that. <laughs> really easy. There's enough yarn here from the ends to sew up the inside of the leg. So I'm going to do this on one leg and then I will sew the other one. Then I will come back, we'll sew the front and then I'll sew the back without showing you. Then I'll stuff it and I'll show making one arm. I'll get the other arm made and then put the head on. It's not a hard project to do. And once you've done the knitting, you can sit and do this anywhere. Put it in a basket, take it with you to the park, whatever. So mattress stitching, you just want to make sure that your columns are facing the same direction. So it looks like I've got, so my V's that I'm going to join, the point is going to my left. See how that point right there is going to the left and this point right here is going to the left. Those are my V's. I'm coming off the front one here, so I'm gonna to go to the back one and I'm going to pick up the bar that's in that V. And I will come back to the front and I will pick up the bar right here that's in that V and then go to the back. And because these are stuffed toys, I do every working on stuffed toys and I want them to be very structurally sound. I'm going to pick up every bar going to the V. Now at a certain point, it, it may twist on you a little bit. You just need to pay attention that you're Points are going the same direction. See how this one's already rolled? It's trying to roll so that my point would be going that way. I have to stay on top of that and make sure that I'm picking up that bar. Oops, in the V. I know it's really hard to see on the black and I'm super sorry. I'm going to do 20, about 20 stitches up. I'm going up 20 rows. Back and forth. You're going to get to a point where your yarn is starting to run out. Like right here, my yarn is feeling like it's running out a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and pull. And look at that, the round going around. It gives you a nice seamless join. I'm going to count here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So what I'll do is I will grab a marker but I'm still just going back and forth. Pick up the bar on the back, pick up the bar on the front. Make sure that the point is still going to the left. That's just how I chose. Your point could be going to the right. It doesn't matter. You just need them to match points going the same direction. And truthfully, if it doesn't match perfectly, if you want to just do a whip stitch, be my guest. Go right ahead. You know, it doesn't, it does not affect the end product very much here. But that is one leg. I'm going to go ahead and stitch that and tie it. And 
And now I'm going to match these guys up. And I'm going to put a... little stitch marker. You can use a safety pin. Whatever works. You want to make sure that your V's are going the same direction again. I've got my V's going to my left. So I'm going to make a stitch going across both of them. just to kind of lock those two together a little bit more. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So just past that. And then I'm gonna count this one up. D. And so what I did is both of these at this end have the V going the proper direction. So I can work my way towards it and not have them not have it go off too much. <laughs> so now pick up the middle of each of those V's. You could make any kind of bipedal critter this way. If you wanted to make this into a four-legged animal, with this part being the body, I would probably make the legs a wee bit shorter and I would sew up the body parts the same way and then sew the legs because then you could do something where it was bent over like this and take your head and put it on. Oh, that would be so cute. That would be really cute too. So this is truly an all-purpose basic body shape. Wow. Let me know if you want to see, you know, more things being made. I was thinking maybe a uh, winter winter elf. You could make woodland fairies, little goblins. little oh my gosh any of the animals you know you could make mice you could make cats and dogs and bears fox fox would be kind of cute going in and doing some of the you know playing with your colors the bodies don't have to be a hundred percent one color either you can you can change colors on your machine as you're knitting this would be really cute to have uh white on the ends for where the feet are especially if you were doing the little the little kitty where you bend the body to make the legs and add the head that would be really cute to have the little feet different color You could, if you were doing this as a person, you could do, you know, the color up to the waist, up to here, with whatever color you wanted the pants to be. And then you could do the color from the waist out to the ends of the, the sleeves, the color the shirt is to be. Or you could stop that color and then do the color for the hands. Maybe you're putting the little person, you, maybe you're making oh, little snow people, little people in snow suits. So many ideas come to you. And if you're good about it and you can think about doing it, you can stop and make notes. I'm lucky because I'm recording this. I don't have to stop and make notes because I've got it recorded. <laughs> oh, but so many good ideas, so many fun ideas. You could use this black body and you could stitch a skeleton frame with white yarn and make the bones. 
and the rib cage and you know up to the head do your do your head and then make that into like a little skull okay I'm gonna stitch this part off and run it through I know you really don't need to run it through but just trapping it in between the layers Oh, you're probably wondering, how do you join this little space between the legs? You just put a couple tacking stitches across. And that's what I'm going to do before I go up and do this other side. I'm going to put a couple stitches across between the legs here that joins this together. So that way the stuffing doesn't come floofing out make a couple make a stitch to lock that in place then I'm going to come I'm going to pick up this in the middle of the back or front I'm going to pick up a stitch on that leg there and a stitch at the base of this leg here I'm going to go back and pick up another stitch on that side. See, basically we're we're just building some some stitches going across. To create a little bit more of a sturdy join. All right. But it only takes three or four stitches. Now I am going to knot that. <laughs> oh, that would just be so cute if you wanted to do it as the cat laying out. So the body just a little bit longer, maybe. Maybe not. Put the tail on it. I'm not putting a tail on this one, though. Okay. Tie that off. First, we need some stuffing. So we're going to put some stuffing inside. See how it's nice and easy to get that in there. Stuff it until it's the shape you want. Yeah. So you can get quite a quite a firm little body here. So I'm going to take my my needle and I'm going to stitch across whip stitch head is going to be going here I don't have to be as particular particular but I just want to make sure that there's a good join Since I've got that stuffing in there, I don't want it to come spilling out like that. Um. <laughs> okay, so right now you could make that into a cape. I wonder if that could be made into little bat wings, maybe? Oh my goodness, it could. 
you could you could almost make that into a little bat you want to make the shoulder so we're going to stitch across back and forth close it up however you want You do want to cut this off because you want to use the yarn coming from the cuff or from the end of the hand. So we're going to thread the needle. I'm going to roll this up towards the, towards the end and I'm going to take a couple stitches. So now you can decide how, how chubby you want your arms to be. You could roll them out and, you know, let it unroll and make it shaped like that. Then they're not as squishy. I like my arms a little bit squishier. So I'm rolling my, my extra width of the tube to the inside. And I am going to mattress stitch. down this arm and because it's not being no I won't say that and re remember just try and keep your points going the same direction it's a little bit trickier because you're you know taking up width of your you're joining it in the round kind of thing so it can be a little bit tricky. Just do your best. It's not rocket science, my friends. This is just a fun project. Match it up as well as you can. When I get down here to close to the body, I'm going to swing this down like this so it's attached at the body and then go back up to the arm I do need to make sure that my my yarn has been pulled so my stitches are tight like that Oops, sorry and then I'm going to from the underside I'm going to go under and pick up a loop just back and forth just to sort of close that up for that part right there. So now that can't flip up. I'm going to go through and do the same thing on the other side here, this side. See how this can flip up right here? Where this doesn't, it's it's attached down now. So I'm going to attach that down. Whatever way makes sense to you. I'm kind of doing a little bit of a running catch step, ca running catch stitch. Coming out under the arm. and then tie it off and bury the yarn inside the body like that so let's see when the head is on here, yeah, see how nice that is. Oh, fun. All right. 
I'm going to get the other arm stitch exactly the same way and I'll meet you back here when we're sewing on the head. So something I want to do here is I'm, I'm not, I'm not opposed to the arms being able to do this, but I want it to have a little bit more shape right here at the very top. So I am going to stitch all the way across, leave the, leave the tail here and then come back. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to tie a knot. And then I'm going to thread both of those tails back through. And down the body and out. Like that. That makes me happy. And now, oh, look at that. So I'm going to take both of these strands. And we're going to go down through the center of the body right here. Pull that on. those tails pulled through. We're going to grab a hold of under the chin, go back into the body. I'm going to come over here to, I'm turning it one quarter turn. I'm going to go back into the head and at the shoulder. I'm going to come around to the back here so we're coming out of the body. So now we go back into the head, back of the head, into the body, at the back here. Yes, I know I still have an extra piece of yarn. I'm just going to use that to do some little tidying up if necessary. So I just came out of the body. I'm going back into the head. Now we're going over the shoulder area of the head. And we're going into the shoulder right there. So I came out of the shoulder. Now I'm going to go back into the uh, the head and I'm going to not do it in exactly the same spot. I'm sort of shifting over ever so slightly because we want the head to look like it's part of the body into the neck. So, so then you can just start going back and forth. Now that we've got it uh, positioned, you can kind of do an internal running stitch. You want to make sure that you get all the way around, that you're not going through exactly the same spots on the head and the body. You want to have as many contact points here as you can. I'm going to come, let's see, I just came out of the head, so back into the body, going back and forth. All right. That feels well and truly attached. Let's just tie that off to that one strand that was still, still hanging out. I don't think we're going to need it. I'm going to thread all of those strands onto the darning needle and just run them back in 
to the body. Like that. And I'm just going to run them in and out. Going through the stuffing. So now I have two little autumn friends. This cute little cat. I'm saying this is Enoch from the Over the Garden Wall. It's one of my favorite fall time shows to watch. It was on the Cartoon Network and it's a great little series. Into the Unknown. And this little pumpkin guy reminds me of some of the people that live in Pottsville, where Enoch lives. This is a great basic doll body. You can do anything with it. You can make people, you can make animals, make monsters, and make imaginary playtime fun. So go grab some of that yarn. It doesn't take much. It takes a couple hours and you're done with the entire project. I'm having fun. I hope you are. Let me know in the comments what else you would like to see me teach you how to do. Remember, do something creative, be kind to yourself, and be kind to others. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>